Hi future teacher, need a math refresher lesson to get prepared for your teacher certification exam? If so, you found the right spot. By the end of this lesson, you will be totally ready to tackle the mathematical process questions that you will likely receive on test day. But don't stop here. Get full access to the study guides, video lessons, and practice tests that makes passing your teacher certification exam simple by visiting teacherpreps.com. Today, we're going to order integers on a number line. Ordering integers on a number line is extremely useful as it allows us to easily tell which numbers are greater than others. It also allows us to use a number line to perform operations such as adding and subtracting integers. When you have a number line, the numbers to the right of zero signify positive numbers, and the numbers to the left of zero signify negative numbers. The farther you are to the right, the larger the number. For example, if we have 3 and 6, 6 is larger than 3 because it's farther to the right. The farther left a number is, the smaller the number is. Think left means less. So if I had the number negative 2 and the number negative 5, negative 5 is less because it's farther left. Notice that the larger the negative number, the smaller it actually is. Let's use a number line to order the following numbers from least to greatest. The first step is to plot the numbers on a number line. We have negative 8, 0, positive 3, negative 3, 5, negative 7, and negative 10. Now you can easily see the smallest are the farther left and the largest are the farther right. And we can write them in the order that we see them. We have negative 10, negative 8, negative 7, negative 3, 0, 3, and 5. Our numbers are now in order from least to greatest. Now pause the video and try this next one on your own. Now let's see how you did. The first step is to plot the numbers. We have 2, 8, negative 3, 1, negative 5, 10, and negative 7. Now we can easily see the order from least to greatest. Negative 7 is the smallest, then negative 5, then negative 3, and then 1, 2, 8, and 10. Now our numbers are in order from least to greatest. In this video, we're going to order fractions and mixed numbers on number lines. Ordering fractions on a number line is similar to ordering whole numbers and integers on a number line. Remember that fractions represent part of a whole. To order fractions on a number line, it helps to have a common denominator. Let's first look at an example using fractions with like denominators. This problem says to compare and order 5 sevenths and 2 sevenths. Like I just said, we have to have that common denominator. In this example, our common denominator is 7. On our number line, each section represents 1 seventh. To place these on the number line, we have 5 sevenths and 2 sevenths. And we can clearly see that 2 sevenths is to the left, meaning it's less. We have 2 sevenths is less than 5 sevenths. That last example was very easy. That's because the fractions had the same denominator. Ordering fractions with unlike denominators gets a little bit trickier. Let's go through the following example. Notice that our denominators are not the same. We have a 10, a 3, and a 6. The first step is to find that common denominator. To do that, we need the LCM, or least common multiple. When you find the LCM, you're just multiplying through. 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, 10 times 3 is 30. Now we can move on to the 6. We have 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 times 5 is 30. Pause the video and find the multiples of 3. Now that you have all the multiples listed out, you can see the LCM, or least common multiple, that they all have in common is 30. So our LCM is 30. The next step is to rewrite equivalent fractions 
with the denominator of 30. 10 times 3 is 30, so 7 times 3 is 21. 3 times 10 is 30, so 1 times 10 is 10. And then 6 times 5 is 30, so 5 times 5 is 25. The final step is to look at those numerators and order the numerators from smallest to largest. So our smallest numerator is 10, so our smallest fraction is going to be the 1 -third. The next smallest numerator is 21, so our next smallest fraction is going to be 21 over 30, which was 7 tenths. And then finally, that leaves us with 25 over 30, which was 5 sixths. Now let's move on to ordering mixed numbers on a number line. Let's first start by putting one mixed number on a number line. A mixed number has a whole number and a fraction. When we make the number line, we have to first put the whole number and then the whole number above it. The next step is to figure out how many sections we need. We need four. So we're going to need to add three lines so that we can make four sections. Each of those represents one fourth. So this would be three and one fourth, three and two fourths, which is three and a half, and then three and three fourths, and then four. So now we can easily see three and three fourths on that number line. Now let's put everything together. This last problem says to order these numbers from least to greatest. The first step is to find that common denominator. Go ahead and pause the video and find the common denominator between two, three, six, and three. If you found the common denominator to be six, you're correct. The next step is to find the equivalent fractions. We have two and one half, which is the same as two and three sixths. We have three and two thirds, which is the same as three and four sixths. We have two and five sixths. We have three and one sixth, and then we have two and one third, which is the same as two and two sixths. The next step is to write our whole numbers. We need a 2, 3, and 4, since our numbers are in between 2 and 4. After we put our whole numbers, we need to figure out how many sections we need. We need 6 sections, which means we need 5 lines in between each number. Pause the video and place the numbers correctly on the number line. Now look at the number lines and see if they match. The final step is to use that number line to order the fractions from least to greatest. We have two and one third, two and one half, two and five sixths, three and one sixth, and three and two thirds. In this video, we're gonna order percentages on a number line. When we order percentages on a number line, we're gonna use a method of creating a double number line. Let's use the example below. It says, Linda's class has a total of 28 students. 21 of these students have pets at home. What percentage of students in Linda's class have pets at home? First, we're going to make a number line that starts at 0 and ends at our total number, which is 28. Next, we're going to make another number line below that shows our data in percentage form. 0 is going to be 0%, and 28 is going to be 100%. Now let's write our two data points given in fraction form. We had 21 out of 28, so we can write 21 over 28. Notice that our fraction is not simplified, and we can divide a 7 out of both the numerator and the denominator. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. So our simplified fraction is 3 fourths. Since our denominator is 4, the next step is to make four equal sections on both number lines. Now we can plot three-fourths on our top number line. One, two, three-fourths. The next step is to then take 100 and divide it up by four. That gets us 25. What that now means is that each section is worth 25%. So we have 25%, 50%, 75%, and then 100%. Now we can see that 3 fourths corresponds with 75%. So 75% of the students have pets.
Now, pause the video and try the next one on your own. Now let's see how you did. It says 25 people were surveyed on their favorite pizza topping. 15 people said that they like hamburger pizza the best. What percentage of people surveyed said they like hamburger pizza the best? Our first step is to put 0 and 25 on our number line, and then 0% and 100% below it. Then we can write 15 out of 25 as a fraction, and you can see that they're not simplified, and we can divide out a 5 from both the numerator and the denominator. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. Since our denominator is 5, we can divide up the number line into 5 sections. Then we need to divide the bottom number line into 5 sections. Next, take 100% divided by the 5. That gets us 20. So each section is worth 20%. We have 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80%. Putting our 3 fifths on the number line, we can now see the 3 fifths correlates to 60%. So 60% like hamburger pizza.